Today we're going to take a look at the very beginning steps of using Soundtrap. Soundtrap is an online DAW, a DAW, digital audio workstation setup. Since it's entirely online, it is ideal for classroom situations. So let's do a lesson on the very basics of how to create your own beat. And we're going to do it using the tools they provide without worrying about how to write it on a proper manuscript paper. So at the top of your screen, you're going to see something that says Studio or Collaborate. I clicked on Studio, and now I'm going to click on this, Demos. And I'm going to click on Dubstep. We're going to let that load. Now it's loading a preloaded song that we're going to listen to real quick. Just the beginning. Sounds a little tinny. Now, in Soundtrap's defense, it sounds amazing on headphones. It really does. They did a great job. But playing through um, here on Screencastify through the microphone, it doesn't do it uh, justice. But trust me, they did a great job with it. All right, cool. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Add a New Track. Then we're going to click on Drums and Beats. I'm going to click on here where it says Machines Vanilla. And we're going to pick something that's not so vanilla. We're going to pick something cool. Let's do low funk hard. Good. I'm going to close that out. Up at the top of your screen, you see, sorry for the pop-ups, we're in demo mode. So these same pop-ups will pop up on your computer as you're playing along. You see this little purple thing? Well, this little purple thing is really important. Now this is a looper. We call it um, a cycle button here in Soundtrap. Now across the top of your screen, these are measure markers. So this is measure one, that's where it begins. This is where measure three begins. Now we want this cycle to go through the first two measures. So I just clicked and dragged it and made it shorter. The same exact way you would click and drag any indent tabs in a word processing software. The reason I mention that is because an awful lot of what I'm showing you is going to be using the same tips and tricks that you would use if you were just working in Microsoft Word or Pages or something. All right, so um, when this is clicked off and it's on gray, nothing happens. If I click this button at the bottom and hit the space bar for play, we keep playing after that little cycle loop thing is off. Now it's turned on. Now it's going to go over and over and over and over and over. And this is great if you're trying to like, you know, do a crossfade on like, you know, two bits of audio on one single track so it sounds natural and it doesn't sound like you're forcing something and everything that is at the same level. For our purposes, it's going to let us play back one specific part of the song so we can hear how our beat sounds in real time. But before we worry about it in real time, I just want you to see how to use it. So we're going to double click on the drum. It brings us here. We'll get into this another time, but this is basically you get uh, to play drums with your keyboards. You click on patterns, and this is what I'm talking about, how you're going to be making the beats. Now, we set up a pattern for two beats, for two measures up here. Now, each measure is four beats. It defaults to four, four, four beats per measure. So this is one beat, this is two beats, three beats, four beats, etc. And these are subdivisions of the beat that are quantized in a real easy manner, only down to 16th notes. You can adjust this, but for, for our purposes, this is perfect for what we want to start with. So we're going to make a, a drum beat, a straight up drum beat. So I'm going to keep this kick drum. I'm going to have it on the downbeat of the first beat and the third beat. The second beat, third beat, good. Second measure and the third beat. Snare is going to be on two and four of each measure. So this is the first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. This is the second measure, first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat. Good. And we're going to add a hi-hat, but we're just going to add a hi-hat instead of like steady all the way through. We're going to add it on the offs. Here we go. Just for some color. And we'll double it up so we have like a, a cool little rock sound. Now I'm going to play it back. 
our looper button, our cycle up here is uh, turned on. So we're just going to hit spacebar. Oh, I'm also going to click follow beat. So uh, this will let us see it scroll across the screen. And it sounds exactly like a rock and roll beat played over a dubstep thing. It doesn't really sound wonderful, right? Now, if I click the cycle button here, notice that it turns this off. So you can go ahead and you can add and keep writing and using this thing throughout the entire song if you choose to. But I'm going to show you a quicker way of taking care of that later. So we're going to turn the cycle on. And really quickly, we're going to add... Uh, a cool like dubstep kind of beat. So we've got that kick there, right? We want to add a kick on four. And over here, let's add it on three and four as well. But this time we're going to add it like a heartbeat. So if you're counting one, two, three, four, it'll be end uh. So four e end uh on the back side of that. I'm going to add and it automatically added to open hi-hat, but I'm going to click on open hi-hat and I want to click on low tom. So I'm going to get that like beefy sound. We're going to have it like walking. Boom, ba, boom, ba. And that's going to be at the same time. We're going to boom, ba, good, same time, same time. And since we're doing dubstep, we're going to double that up with that kick, give a nice heavy sound. All right, now with hi-hats, with the hi-hats, um, let's do hi-hats on anticipations. So 1 E and a, 2 E and a, we're going to put it right there. 3 E and a, 4 E and a, we'll add 2 right there. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, add right there. And here, let's accent that again, just right there. All right, and now for a snare, we don't want to add snare on the obvious spots. It'll sound too much like rock and roll. So let's just accentuate the kick. Now this should give us a nice dubstep feel. Let's check it out. Our cycle is on. We're following the beat. The cursor, if I click this button, it goes all the way to the left. Now I'm going to hit the space bar. All right, so it was getting better, but it sounds a bit uh, stuffy and dodgy, not too loose. And I think that's because of the tom there. So I'm going to add that snare here. And I'm going to add that hi-hat here. This should sound like a, a machine is playing. It'll give it that cool electric sound that we sometimes look for with dubstep. Let's hear what it sounds like. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going for. So we're going to make this same pattern right over here. Nice. And we're going to add that pattern here. All right, now let's hear what this finished beat sounds like. I click back to the beginning. Our cycle is on, follow the beat is on. All right, so it's good. It's doable. It's uh, it's not Mozart making dubstep drums, but it'll work for the example, right? All right, so the next thing you want to do, you can play with these things. Um, here's a tip. When you click on these dials, you're not actually clicking on them and going around in a circle. When you click, you're just going up, and down just like it was a slider on an actual workstation in front of you okay so room is just the sound of the room size of the room we're going to just pretend like we're in like a say i don't know one third it it'll sound like i'm in a big room with n no echo just like a little bit of a, a faint something behind uh, the sound of my voice uh, now we're going to add a reverb which is going to echo every single bit of that drum uh, pan is left and right. We're going to leave it in the center. And volume, we're going to put it up so we can really hear it. Good. And now let's play it one last time. Cool. Now watch me edit this in real time. I'm going to be doing the exact same stuff I did before, except I'm leaving the cycle on. You see, it gets a little crazy because it's following the beat. I'm going to turn the follow beat off and scroll myself and just add some other stuff. All right, and now I'm getting to the final word of caution here. 
don't just fill up the space and don't just make pretty designs. Making something that looks pretty might not sound pretty. It might be visually appealing, but remember, this is just a computer. So let's make this Space Invaders thing. You know, I'm thinking like, as I'm saying that, <laughs> this might be like the best thing ever. Let's hear what it sounds like. Let's go back to the top and let's follow the beat. Yeah, I suppose there's going to be a time and a place where that's appropriate, right? Okay, cool. So I mentioned uh, word processing software, right? So my, my cycle looper is off there. You see how these little bubbles exist everywhere? These are little parts of the track. Now, these are tracks go all the way across, but these things are little bits of audio that can be edited or extended or copied and pasted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy, hit Shift, click on this guy, and you'll see they're both highlighted. Now I'm going to hit Control-C, Command-C, and I'm going to move my cursor and put it right there and hit Control-V, and now we copied it there. All right, so if it's on one and five, we're gonna copy this pattern. On nine, same thing, control V. I'm still copying that same thing. And you get the point. Let's hear what this sounds like. Now we're gonna have our beat over and over again, but it's gonna have two measures of rest. Rewind. And play. So that like, you know, Space Invaders, thing was really annoying. So I'm actually going to delete it on those two. So we hear it at the beginning and we'll hear it there. Now let's hear. Yeah, and if I played around with the volume, which is right here, and I dropped it a bit. It might sound really cool. It might really work out. Who knows, right? So after you're done playing with it and copying, pasting, and um, creating uh, new drum beats, all you need to do is click on File and Export. And when you export, you're going to export to an MP3 file, and then you're able to upload it to wherever you submit your work. Um, like in Google Classroom, when you turn it in, in the project, you just submit the MP3 file. This will automatically trim your audio and soundtrack to stop at the end of the song. So you don't have to do any editing to uh, make sure you're only submitting what you need to submit. It's literally just gonna be this chunk of music. And one last tip before you go, if this sounds cool, but you wanna add more color and you wanna have more fun with using this beat maker, if you just click on a new track, click on drums and beats, it does the same exact thing over again. You could technically click the same one, or you could pick something else. Let's pick a uh, Smack King. And you see how here we've added a new track. Let's say on these off measures, we want to have just like this walking sound. All right, let's close that. Let's hear that sounds. Rewind, play. All right, cool. I'm going to delete that extra one. This is what we did. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm copying it and I'm going to paste it right on that point right before. See if it sounds cool. And let's hear this from the top one more time using two drum tracks. Cool, we're getting there. So you see how with just a little bit of work and effort, you can edit visually using these awesome tools in Soundtrap, and it'll save it to your online um, profile, and then you can export it as an MP3 and upload it as your assignment. So I hope you learned something new. Have a lot of fun with it, and I'll see you next time.